Today we are taking a look at the 2013 Toyota Sienna and we are going to decide if it is a buy or if it's a bust. This Toyota Sienna behind me is a 2013 and has 150,000 miles. I recently reviewed the previous generation Toyota Sienna and it was a buy because it was so ridiculously functional and boring, just like a minivan should be. We're gonna see if the new Sienna follows that tradition. We're gonna go through the common problems, reliability issues, and then decide if this is the right car for you and see if it's a buy just like its predecessor. We're gonna start up front here on our walk around and as you can see, the paint shines beautifully on this. The previous Sienna did not have uh, quite that much luck. It was that typical Toyota white paint that does not really shine, but this one here is beautiful. The only real wear I see up here is the oxidation on the headlights, which you're gonna have on any vehicle basically that sat outside with 150,000 miles. Now, as we get into newer vehicles and things, we don't have to worry quite as much about rust, but 2013, surprisingly, is still 11 years ago, and that's plenty of time for rust to start, but luckily this Sienna has held up really, really well. There's really not a whole lot to talk about on the outside here, but uh, if you live in the Northeast, it is still a good idea. <laughs> it's still a good idea to get a vehicle, get somebody underneath to check if there is any big rust issues that could maybe make your car unsafe. Under the hood here of the Toyota Sienna, you can see that we have the 3.5 liter V6 that makes 200 and 66 horsepower, which is very healthy for a minivan. You can hear that it is running very, very quietly. There was a few things in the previous generation Sienna that I mentioned that really are not an issue here. The engines on these are very reliable. The transmissions are very reliable. And this one is the all wheel drive model. Now the all wheel drive system in these vehicles is very reliable as well. The mechanicals of this thing are great and not a lot of issues are common. While this particular car has not had these issues, I do wanna mention some ones that you could look out for. If you're getting some noise from the belt and pulley area, area on the side of the engine, that could be a bad tensioner or idler pulley. I've seen that be somewhat common. The other one is AC compressor and AC issues. If your AC isn't working, it could be the compressor. It could be a couple other things if there's a leak somewhere, but those are somewhat common, but you need to get that checked out if you notice that you're looking at one of these and the AC is not working. Now, all-wheel drive was not common when these vans came out, and it's an awesome feature that they have, but there is one thing I need to mention that isn't really a problem, but is a wear item that is extremely frustrating, or can be, on these. The tires do not last very long. When Toyota made these, they didn't have room for the spare because of the all-wheel drive system. So they did run flat tires, which one, are expensive, and two, did not last very long. You get 20, maybe 30,000 miles out of a set of tires, and they weren't cheap to replace. My recommendation is keep a patch kit with you. No, that won't fix every problem, but it'll, it might, if you get a puncture, that'll help, and then just buy a middle of the road, or even a high-end tire, but not the run flats that wear out so quickly. As we move to the inside, yes, Toyota changed the outside looks of the Sienna and I think improved them from the previous generation, but this is the big area where they improved and that is the interior. My big complaint with the previous generation was how the interior wore and the overall look and style of it I felt was fairly Fair, fairly ugly, to be 100% honest. The wear and tear on it is minimal at 150,000 miles. There is some, you know, spot, signs on the seat of use, but the overall look, there's no cracks in the dash like the previous generation. It has held up extremely, extremely well. Now, as you look on the interior, you can see that this one is loaded. It is the limited, which means that they were limited by how many of them that they could sell, not how many they would make. So this is loaded up. It has the higher end sound system, nav, all of those things. And honestly, the interior still shows really well. This model basically ran up to 2020. And I think overall, it, uh, it, you know, it looks pretty good even, if, even though it is 11 years old. There is some signs, and that is mostly in the infotainment system, which wasn't even a word yet in 2013. 
but the navigation, all that is fairly dated, and I'd probably just use my phone <laughs> over, over what they offer in here, but that is every car of this generation. My favorite thing about the Siennas in general is the functionality is just off the charts. Everything inside of these cars is just well thought out. The storage is great. The seats are comfortable. Uh, there's tons of cup holders. That does not mean that this interior is perfect. One, everything is still hard plastic. It's not like a high quality interior. Things like the cup holder sliders don't really work all that well, but you gotta kind of like punch it to get it to open. It's not like, a, not like an easy thing. Um, yeah, I'm not overly impressed with the materials, but I do think they will hold up long term really well, even though they're not fancy. All the electronics, everything like that work flawlessly in here. One of the common problems, even though this van does not have it, is sunroof. Sunroof leaks are somewhat common. Usually it's just drains. You got to clean them out. It's not a huge deal, but it is something that could really ruin your interior if you don't take care of it. As we move back here, the slider doors on this one work perfectly. They did use basically the same exact system as the previous Santa, which did have some problems. Usually with the wiring, there's a couple different things in the sensors that also could be a problem. These ones work okay, but pretty much any minivan ever has problems with the automatic sliding doors and Sienna's are no exception to those problems. So they did some really cool things with the rear seat area in this Sienna, especially the limited. I don't think all of them came with it, but sliders, number one, let's start with that. This seat slides everywhere. I can go the whole way back here. I can go the whole way up here. Now, if I want to lay back and relax, I can lean this guy back and then flip up the little footrest down here. Now this seat's a little bit further back so it's it's not super comfortable at the moment. But if you were gonna take a nap or sleep in here, you can also adjust the armrest like I need to right there because it was too high up. But it's, this would not be a bad place to sleep and for road trips and things in a minivan, that is a huge, huge deal. Now, the sliding I also love because you can make it, it makes it so functional to put large items inside of the minivan or whatever you need to do. And I actually think for day-to-day -day life, I might like this solution better than the Chrysler Stow & Go. The seats are definitely more comfortable because they use really thin seats to make the Stow & Go ones work. These ones here are like proper captain's chairs and I noticed that difference right away. One thing I should note that is a negative on these seats is the seats do come out and it's down here at the bottom, but the track system that slides does not remove. So if you need to put a sheet of plywood, it's not gonna lay flat in the uh in the back here so that kind of always sticks up it's a little annoying and a little bit clunky i wish they would have done something different with that but overall it is you know I, I still really like the system other cool thing and i did not even know until i just got in here today is the cup holders slide back here and give you well it gives you a bunch of extra space for under your center console in the front but also brings your cup holders back here so they're close to you which i think is just a nice Thought, thought out feature. In the third row back here, and it is an okay place to be. I would be comfortable here at least on a semi-long road trip. I don't know if I would wanna do 10 or 12 hours, but the seat is soft, it's comfortable. I really have no complaints. It's, um, it's probably above average, but still it's a third row and third rows are never great. One thing that is really cool is the DVD player is absolutely, the screen is absolutely massive and uh, you can definitely see that really easily from the back. Now we have reached my favorite portion of any of these reviews, and that is the driving portion. I unfortunately loved how the old Sienna drove for a minivan. Put that asterisk in there for a minivan. I didn't love the way it drove. It was not some sports car, but the reviewers when this van came out said that somehow Toyota put a sports car underneath of a minivan. It was basically what the reviewer said. And uh, with the power and everything, I kind of believe that, and especially with how good the previous generation drove. So we're gonna check that out. One of the things that I would consider to be common maintenance, but not super you know, common, it's, it's somewhere between a uh, maintenance issue and a problem, is this has had control arms done on it. And as I just went over some speed bumps here, I noticed that there is clunks in the front suspension. Now, at 150,000 miles, you should expect some of that However, I know this one has already had the front end components done on it. Uh, so it, uh, it seems like it has come back. So that's something to keep in mind. If you take it on a test drive, you know a lot of, you notice a lot of clunks, you're probably gonna have some struts or something under the front end that's going to need some attention. 
Now I will say the steering is tight. Uh, no issues with uh, anything that I feel there at all. As we're out on the road here, cruising 50, 60 miles an hour, everything feels great. The transmission is, actually I really like the feel of the transmission, which is not something I think I would say. Um, although the last van I did was a Dodge Grand Caravan and those are absolutely atrocious transmissions. So uh, this feels really nice. The power is really solid, really smooth. There is some wind noise I feel like you get kind of from the back portion of it that maybe is actually even more apparent than the previous generation Sienna. Um, that's about all that I, I really notice as I'm, as I'm driving here. As we go around some corners, it feels good. It, it, feels, it feels really good. I mean, you can feel that the car has some weight to the top of it especially, but it is not bad. Like, it, um, it handles really remarkably well for a minivan, um, or even for probably an SUV. This 3.5 liter does like 16 in the city, 22 on the highway, real world is somewhere like 18 and a half, 19. Um, that is not great. Uh, you know, I, I think minivans, especially in newer, even though this one isn't new, the newer generation of minivans, I feel like should be up in that 24, 25, 26 range. So it is a little bit tight, you know, harder on fuel, but you're gonna have that with anything that's all wheel drive. We made it back from our test drive and now it is time to really get into that nitty gritty and decide if this thing is a buy or if it's a bust. And we do need to talk about one negative that we haven't brought up yet, but it could be a positive depending on your opinion. And that is price. These hold their value extremely well as Toyotas are known for. So you're not gonna lose a lot, but you're also gonna have to spend a lot up front. And these run somewhere in the 10 to $12,000 range and that for an 11 year old minivan with 150,000 miles is kind of crazy, um, but that's just where the market is on them. That being said, you could pretty much trust that you're gonna get most of your money back out of it if you were to sell it down the road, but you're probably gonna run it into the ground because as we've talked about, there's not a lot of issues with these. If you search online, go search, people are very happy with these minivans. They say that they're like never going to buy anything else is the general consensus out there. There is those few common things. You're gonna have to replace some suspension stuff at higher mileage. You could have some AC, sunroof leaks, whatever. But uh, nothing that's super uncommon for any vehicle. And honestly, it has less than almost any other vehicle that I've reviewed. The driving experience, the day-to-day -day life is excellent. So this one, we are going to declare a buy. And it's like an easy, easy decision for me. Um, it's, it's just a functional, dare I say near perfect execution at a minivan. So let me know in the comments down below if you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, that's okay. But I wanna hear your thoughts. If you have one of these, put your common problems, things you've experienced down below. I wanna hear about them. If there's something I missed, I wanna hear about that too. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you at the next one. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back.